Hey, hey, I'm Saving Content Zone, Derek Austin. Welcome to .exe, a saving content podcast. It's episode 21, and joining us on this very special 21st podcast is Eric Acosta. Shots, 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 shots. Yes. Yeah. Woo. Woo, 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 woo. Also joining us on this very special uh, podcast, it's a very special guest. It's Papa Content himself. Scott Ellison, the editor-in-chief of this very website. Oh, man. Did I, did I come into the wrong room? <laughs> you, you may have. Uh, quick save is on that side. Hey, party room. Hey. I, must have, I must have took a wrong turn at Albuquerque. Right? Bugs Bunny has always said. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, do you, do you think the youth of today knows that joke in any shape? Absolutely not. <laughs> no. <laughs> not at all. I'm I'm gonna try that with Keegan. I'm gonna I'll make that joke and see if he looks at me like what. I, mm, I I wonder if even maybe the youngest one even knows who Bugs Bunny is. Well, Keegan and Genevieve know because they actually did. We have a D, uh, a DVD of like older uh, Looney Tunes and stuff like that, so they know the characters, right? Okay. But um. I think outside of just like, you know, like how like we know the Flintstones, not well, I know the Flintstones, not necessarily because I watched the Flintstones, but because I saw them on ve- um, vitamins and cereal. Uh, <laughs> I thought you were going to say vegetables. <laughs> I almost did. No, so that was very wrong. <laughs> yeah, I got these Flintstones. That's carrots. a missed opportunity. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> bam, bam, celery. <laughs> just sell them alongside the vitamins, like you said. Yeah. It's, yeah, it'd be like ants on a log. Right? But instead of, <laughs> instead of raisins and vitamins. I only like the Fred Flintstone vitamins on my ants on a log. Oh, I eat. They have grape flavor. So that would work. Ugh. All right. Just replace, <laughs> just replace the ravens with the uh, raven. raisins. <laughs> we'll definitely replace the ravens. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You don't need don't need ravens in your in your uh, ants on a log and a shepherd's pie. I guess would be okay or crow. What is a crow pie? What is that thing called again? I have no idea what you're talking about. Isn't I know like what a shepherd's a, pie is. I know what a shepherd's pie is. I don't know what are you talking about. Like is there like a feet? saying? No, no. Isn't there like a saying when like you you embarrass yourself or something and you you, you eat crow or something or? Yeah, there's something about eating crow, but I don't know about a crow. Uh, pie you don't I make a pie was... out of that no you don't be... <laughs> maybe maybe if you like write a whole essay then 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 it's a crow <laughs> pie yeah because then it becomes like a, a dessert meal you know it's a whole thing it's like okay you didn't just make a single statement yeah <laughs> you really gotta make up for this eat the whole pie see maybe it's just i like pie enough that i'll put anything into a pie Ugh. i mean i assume crow tastes like chicken <laughs> can't imagine this, it does i i hope for the best <laughs> on that one hey at that point if you're eating crow then you know take what you get i guess i mean at that stage if you're eating crow literally things are not going well for you <laughs> yeah that's just one step above pigeon right yeah <laughs> <laughs> well you know what else is one step above this segue hey scott hey, okay. what if you're you're new to this uh, podcast here. What, for anybody who doesn't know whom you are, or uh, maybe they've forgotten a little bit about Quick Save, uh, introduce yourself. Uh, let, us, let us know. So I'm Scott Ellison, and I am the co-founder and the editor-in-chief of SavingContent.com. Uh, it has been my baby since 2011, and it's wild to me that we're still going um right <laughs> we've done we've done the podcast thing a few times mm-hmm. uh but now now we have two yeah so <laughs> right. so my main podcast is quick save that i do with my one of my best friends evan Rowe, and we do a very similar silly zany thing over there and we are are not so much topic focus like this one but i that's kind of what i love about the difference between them is that it doesn't feel like there's two of the same podcasts going on 
Right. Yeah, exactly. And, uh, yeah, I and I have a day job, so the website isn't everything that I do, but have family, I I do this website and I have a job, so I I kind of juggle a lot. Oh, of at course. Once. A veritable uh medieval man. Uh or just evil. <laughs> he's not he's not medieval he's full evil <laughs> full evil he's he's gone over the edge straight yeah <laughs> nice all right so since you're the guest on this lovely podcast of ours why don't we start off with um is, is there anything you want to talk about today before we get into uh our our long hiatus that me and eric have had <laughs> uh I mean, for me, like, uh, I've just been playing a lot of my backlog, Mm -hmm. um, clearing a lot of that stuff out. Like it's, it's a weirdly good year for the backlog. Um, I know. Right. I was just getting ready to say that. I only think almost everyone is, is backlogging it. It's so wild. And it feels so good, uh, to get through a lot of these games. You know what I'm having an issue with is that I have these backlog games, but at the same time, it's like. But I kind of don't want to play it right now. I want to go play this <laughs> other game that I play like every day. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah I, I, I've been I've been in that same boat of like, yeah. I've got like five games that I should play, and I go, yeah, and I'll sit down and go, mm, I don't want to. <laughs> I'm gonna play this. There, there's a bit of that. I do get like a, uh, I don't know if this is actually a thing, but I call it like, <laughs> uh, I'm trying to recall like what I've what I've given the just it's it's basically just like campaign depression where it's i've finished a game that maybe was short or long but it it just like i had investment in it i i enjoyed every part of it and now that it's over i'm kind of sad and so i'm oh. not quite ready to move on to the next game yet okay that is a weird um like i have that same thing like there'll be i I'll finish it. It's like, is there anything else I can do? Because I kind of want to keep playing. Yeah. But there isn't. And you just get kind of like, ugh, I don't, I don't want to do anything else but go back. So almost like a, like a gaming empty nest syndrome? Yeah. Right. Just, sure. It, like I'm, I'm missing something or I've, I've lost something. <laughs> right. And I'm kind of, I kind of have to grieve through it until yeah. i'm re- until i'm ready um so i do have to find something like that's maybe multiplayer or is some m- sort of like roguelike or something like that where there's no story attached to what i'm doing but i'm still playing something so kind of like a rebound <laughs> yes <laughs> a game a rebound. Rebound. <laughs> <laughs> but no attachments no attachments right no <clears throat> no it's it's a uh, uh, games with benefits. with benefits. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> WB. Games with benefits. GWB. That was the original title for Game Pass. <laughs> Dude, that'd be <laughs> awesome. Uh, Would you get on ga- uh, Games with Benefits? Oh, dude. Great <laughs> game. I kind of want to actually I'm going to tweet it. I'm going to tweet that to to Xbox Game Pass. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> games with benefits. They'll be like, what the heck are you smoking? <laughs> no, the, the Xbox, whoever runs Xbox Game Pass is going to totally be on board with this. Yeah. I've noticed, like, their Twitter account is pretty, um, uh, I don't know the best way to put it, like, self-aware. <laughs> and they also put out really dumb things, like, Shh, here's an email that we sent with all the Game Pass games on it, but we leaked them, wink, wink. It's kind of like this weird mix of, (laughs) but yeah, that's an entertaining follow. All right. Tweet sent. We'll see (laughs) how this goes. (laughs) It could be real time situation now. Yeah. Yeah. If, if I get a reply while, while we're still doing this, I will definitely be sure to include it. Perfect. (laughs) But other than that, what you got? Have you, have you actually Uh, picked up anything? So I just reviewed Tiny Tina's Wonderlands um, uh-huh. and I, I published the review just prior to finishing the game and I finished the game over the weekend and it's very good. Um, but I still prefer Borderlands. I heard that from a fair amount of like just people wa- not even like playing it, just like looking at it going, <laughs> it, it looks good, but is it? 
<laughs> like I, it, it's totally good. Like there's really kind of nothing wrong with it except for like it still uses guns. Like it's still the Borderlands formula. Formula. It's just wrapped up in this Dungeons and Dragons fantasy uh rapper aesthetic. Right. Um but like you're still shooting shotguns. You're still shooting um you know machine guns. You're still shooting rifles and pistols and all of that. Like it's still the same weapons but they have like a different look to them or uh you don't use grenades anymore. You use you cast a spell. So it could be like a poison spell or a frost spell or something like that. Like, yeah. There's just all these like little tweaks, little changes here and there. Tiny Tina is a little more restrained. So if <laughs> maybe you found her to be very annoying and bothersome, not really the case here. Um, she only pops up here and there. Um, and even when she does, like I, I was never bothered uh, like I have been in the past. I was actually going to ask is what is your because Tiny Tina seems to be this very um, polarizing uh, character, whether you you really like her or you really don't. Uh, I was going to ask which side you fall on. (laughs) I I, I mean, I've been more on the spectrum of liking her, but like I have noticed that like she's been a problem. I noticed that like (laughs) she was written very badly. Yeah. Now, do you think I was on purpose? Like written badly on purpose to make you to make it this you know, divisive. Mm, that I don't know, but what I can tell you is that there's a whole different set of writers for Wonderland. So, oh, the the shift in who's actually doing the writing seems to have like a positive impact on the overall writing of the game, down from like the quests to to Tiny Tina herself. Well, that's okay. good. Like. I know some people don't like the voice. What is it? Ashley Birch is the uh, voice actor. Mm -hmm. So I don't mind her. I don't mind that. Like, I don't know what you'd call that voice, but like uh, more annoying Harley Quinn. (laughs) So that's actually what I always thought she was just like a Harley Quinn. I got, I, I, it took me, it was after I beat the game and I was watching trailers for stuff because I've been trying to figure out what I want to watch this weekend. Mm -hmm. I realized Maybe not on purpose. Who she reminds me of? Okay, because you know how she has like these really high highs, and then she kind of like dips into these lows for certain words. Yes, uh-huh. Bobcat Goldthwait. <gasps> oh my gosh! Yeah, yeah. She's only missing that like that oh, yeah. um that what do you what would you call that that stutter that he does that trembling yeah. stutter. Yeah, but yeah, <laughs> I can see that now. <laughs> That that may have ruined me. <laughs> <laughs> you you guys remember that <clears throat> Bobcat used to have a show on like um oh what was it? it? It was like TNT or something. It was one of those variety shows. Was it FX? And maybe it was FX. I don't remember. But he was the host, and I remember I remember being pretty young when that was on. So I don't know, late nineties. Hmm. I don't remember this. I just remember him being the dog on that, like, Married with Children, but not Married with Children show. Married uh, with Children, but not Married with do- The dog? Yeah, he was like a, a puppet dog. He was the voice of the puppet dog. Not, you know, talking about It was on uh, the Triumph. WB. No, no, no. It was on the WB, like, late mm. 90s, early 2000s. Well, let's see. Here's IMDB. Um... Let's see. There's something called Unhappily Unhappily Ever Ever After. After. (laughs) Yeah, that's it. Yeah. I don't remember that show at all. I know of the name, but boy, I couldn't tell you anything about that. Yeah, it was basically Married with Children. (laughs) That so Married with Children is that show that like it worked when it worked and only when it worked. Yeah. Like it was of its time in 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 its time. (laughs) It was not forward thinking. It was not something that could that could last it oh, worked no. then <laughs> i i specifically remember the uh the no ma'am club <laughs> oh the he man no hate he no that's woman that, no that's from um he man women haters clubs from um Rask, Meredith. Uh, that's rascals, Meredith. little rascals he man yeah. woman hater that's from uh, little rascals the oh. one scott talking about is no yeah it's like no ma'am something it was like no yeah i don't remember how it but it was basically a no woman's club. Right. Yeah. They, uh, yeah. Our, they had shirts and everything. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, a lot of that show does not work. And no. Yeah, you're totally right. <laughs> it was of its time and and yeah. Katie Boy, Siegel, though. Great actor. Yeah. I was uh I mean Ed O'Neill kind of got like a, a second wind of yeah. stardom with Modern Family. Yeah. And he was amazing in that. Huh. I didn't watch a whole lot of that, but yeah, I, it was one of those that I felt it was the natural progression, like the if you would call it a sequel of a of a TV series from Married with Children to that, like it fit him very well, the character at least. Yeah. Speaking of Married with Children, apparently Bobcat Goldthwait was on an episode. Oh, really? That, that makes sense. <laughs> the truly, the one hundred percent makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> and I must be going mad because I cannot find his variety show in his listing. So either this is a uh, I'm making stuff up or it's a um, Mandela effect <laughs> Mandela effect thing. It could be. Oh, well, <laughs> <laughs> I could have swore he had his own show. I the only thing I ever remembered from Bobcat was it, it was like in a variety show, but I think I don't think it was his, but it was just like almost like a just a comedy variety show. Um, Not that he was like he was like in a box kind of yeah. thing. Then doing like, just doing jokes, telling jokes, but it wasn't just him. It was him, and then it went to somebody else. Was it like a comic relief thing? Maybe, <laughs> maybe I want to say it was actually something on Comedy Central, and it was one of those like comic comedian stand up things. Oh, oh, but maybe that's the only thing I ever remember from him. Well, boy, and we were talking about Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, huh? <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Way to get us onto Bobcat. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so like. Her her character is is pretty chill and like the, there's like a surprisingly good cast here. So you've got uh, Will Arnett as the big bad, and then you've got Andy Samberg and Wanda Sykes as like your your party uh, members who are helping narrate along with Tiny Tina as you go through your adventure. Okay. Wow. All right. Really good voice casting and like totally enjoyable. Like no no one person. Uh, kind of fails and no one person makes it unbearable <laughs> for the rest to enjoy. Um, it's just not, it's just not my favorite game of this style from Gearbox. I think Borderlands is the best that they do. Um, I, I haven't played a lot of Borderlands three, but I do prefer it. Like I, I went back cause I had to remind myself like, okay, is like what systems are the same, what are different or, you know, and I wanted to find those comparisons. Right. So in playing that, I was having a lot more fun with Borderlands 3, but I would definitely play through Wonderlands again, like in (laughs) co-op or do the end game stuff with someone like there's nothing that would stop me from doing it. So I don't know what that says necessarily. It's just it's just not my favorite, but it is still a good game. I need to get back into Borderlands 3. I lost my Borderlands 3 partner, so it's just kind of the save has just kind of been sitting there. So yeah. it's like, man, I really enjoyed my time with that game. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's you know, a- but playing by myself is just like, eh, it feels more These- like a co-op experience. These games are are hard to, to play. Uh, there, there is, they did make an update to Borderlands 3 for crossplay. Oh, really? Just, just throwing it out there. Yeah, because huh. yeah, mine is on the PlayStation. Although I think I have a uh, Epic Game Store version because I think that was a freebie at some point. Yeah, just pretty recently, actually. But yeah, uh, Borderlands 3 now has crossplay across Xbox One, Series X and S, PlayStation 4, PS5, Steam, and Epic, and even Google Stadia for the five people that have <laughs> Google was Stadia. Kidding, that still have it and actually use it. <laughs> My gosh, I have to wonder what happens when they just finally shut that down. No one will know. It'll be a Google good will save some money. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like Scott said, the five people will be very upset. How dare you? Guess I'm going to have to go to my Steam Deck. Are you can buy Steam Deck. Play. Yeah. You going to get a Steam Deck, Scott? I don't have a use for it. I'm glad I, someone I, says that because <laughs> I looked at it and did the same thing and went, mm-hmm. but I don't need it. Like, there's no use for it and you know looking online everyone's like everyone can use it Ah, that's not true is it i mean i do want it but i I 
I wouldn't use that. I don't use like as an example, I have a switch and I just don't play it anymore. Like right. I straight up just do not play it. Um yeah, it's, and I it, do feel bad about that, <laughs> but at the same time, like if there's like a an exclusive, you know, like I that's pretty much what I've ever only ever used it for was buying, you know, very specific Nintendo games like right. Mario Kart or mm-hmm. Luigi's, Luigi's Mansion or whatever. So like if something is released exclusively to it, then I'll go there and play it. But I really haven't even done that in a while. Like I've I've really just fallen off. So that even though having my entire Steam library, which is massive, portable, doesn't even make sense for me because I'm. I'm never really away from my office or my computer to where that would make sense. Right. Yeah. Like I, other than taking it on, you know, to like Eric's house or something, I see no point because, you know, if I'm going to, if I'm taking something, I have my laptop here that can game pretty, pretty well. And it's, you know, compatible with just about everything that's out there. Right. Um, I don't have to wait for a Steam Deck update to be like, oh, hey, this game works on there now. Granted, I hear it's pretty good with the Steam library, but um, yeah, well, that, the only time always... I'm actually playing my Switch is, you know, when there's a big release or something or if right. I'm hopping back into Animal Crossing because <laughs> once it gets you its hooks in you, uh, it's like, oh, <laughs> that's I the reason perfect. why I never bought it. I was close to buying it several times, but I never did. You stayed away. You uh, uh, stayed strong, Scott. Good job. I, I don't know how I did it. <laughs> You're not going to be like our parents, me and Eric's uh, parents, where they end up putting, um, well, shoot, I think, what did I say? They had like 20 some thousand hours in Animal Crossing. According to the Switch, it was something really high and ridiculous like that. Yeah. 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 It's I mean, that's, much. that's adorable, though. It's it also is. adorable. I'm very glad that they found a game that they both enjoy and can play. <laughs> <laughs> until, you, until you sit there and watch them play it together, because then they just get upset at each other. <laughs> what? Okay, so I'm <laughs> sitting there. I'm playing my copy on their uh, um, uh, Switch dock on the TV. And my mother is sitting there telling me, you know, if you do this and you do that, or uh, you should do this, or why aren't you collecting all the bells? That you, I'm like, stop backseat gaming. <laughs> so 20,000 hours is 2.2 calendar years. That's a lot. Yeah, that sounds about right, And the game right, only actually. came out March 20th, 2020. So that would mean that they would have had to <laughs> never stop playing. They would actually have to abandon sleep in order to keep <laughs> those hours up. Well, well, they have left it on a few times. I think yeah. that's a lot to do with the the count there. Is them just leaving it on or not suspending yeah. or whatever? Well, until you see them play and <laughs> you realize that, oh, most of this time, probably I'd say 80% of the time, they are actually on the game. <laughs> they are on it a lot, yes. Uh, but yes, there are times where it's just sitting in kind of like a suspended state, you know, dimmed screen and everything. Uh, <laughs> With waiting. the music playing in the background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Granted, that music's not, I mean. It, no, it's very relaxing. It's, a, yeah, it's it's elevating music. So it's not like annoying and, and you know, uh, get you out of whatever you're doing. But well, it, it does happen that way a lot. <laughs> other than Tiny Tina, uh, is there anything else that you've been playing or? Uh, seen any good movies lately? Yeah, so um, I've had the house to myself for the past two weeks. And so I thought I'm going to subscribe to Shudder and I'm going to watch a bunch of horror movies uh, or horror adjacent because it's it's not just horror movies. So it's, you know, got some thrillers and just a lot of gory movies necessarily straight up horror. Um, so I watched uh, a bunch of movies. In fact, uh, three of them were Nick Cage movies that were exclusive to the streaming service. Uh, oh, so I'll, I'll go from from <laughs> from worst to best okay. of the Nick Cage movies. <laughs> so the worst one that I watched was the most recent, and it was uh, shit. What was it called? Uh, <laughs> it was it was not good. I could barely remember. Uh, <laughs> Ghost? No, no. I want to say it's Ghost of Trashland, but that's wrong. 
The word is Ghostland. Ghost of that would be that it. Sounds Ghost of familiar. Trashland? Ghostland. Prisoner, prisoners of the Ghostland is what I watched. Ah, prisoners of the Ghost. That's that's me using Google while <laughs> you guys buy me enough time. Hey, <laughs> I am good with that. I'd much rather you get it correct than be like, oh, you. You in the it audience, you go research this. yourself. Yeah, this is a callback to a conversation that nobody else would have known about, but <laughs> it was for you, Ed. It's Yay! You. Wonderful. Uh, so yeah, Prisoners <laughs> of the Ghost Land. It's basically Mad Max meets Escape from New York. Oh. Hmm. Uh, only a little more gorier and a little goofier uh, <laughs> and a lot Nick more Cage. nonsensical. Um, it is Nick Cage. I was kidding. It is Nick Cage. And he does it. He he handles it with grace, and he does like a great job with what he's given. Um, but basically, it's it's him uh, a bank robbery gone wrong. He gets caught, and th- this uh, the mayor's grand or the governor's granddaughter goes missing. So he breaks him out of jail. Not breaks him, but he just takes him out of jail, and he straps him up in this leather suit that has like these tiny remote charges on it. On his arms, his what? neck, and his testicles. What? And so if he gets an impure thought, the testicle ones go off. Mm. If, uh, <laughs> if he uh, is violent towards women, which I don't know how to detect. Like, logic how is so <laughs> far out the window on this movie. That? If his arms or legs uh, are determined based on, like, the way his brain thinks is... Is, is somehow how like he's enraged, right? Then those charges will go off based on the arm that's got movement or whatever. It's it's nuts. Uh, it's just it's barely good enough for the first time. Like I don't, <laughs> I'm not the type of person to turn a movie off. Like if I've started it, I'll finish it. Uh, but it was not good. Um, some <laughs> there, really goofy ooh. stuff going on, but no, I'm good. There was only one time I've ever. Well, I guess walked out of a movie <laughs> uh and it was one of the harry potter movies i don't I'm, oh, wow. I'm not a i'm not a harry potter person to begin with so i think the only reason we went to go watch the movies because we were bored but yeah like 10 minutes in i was like no i can't do this <laughs> and i left well we left but uh i left <laughs> did you get your money back no um we should have, in hindsight. <laughs> I mean, 10 minutes really isn't, like, anything. No, it's not. It was just like, man, this is just... <sighs> so... Uh, I've never walked, that I remember, out of a movie theater, but I have slept through some. And a Harry Potter one... What was a Prisoner of Azkaban? That was the one I slept through. Like, I slept, and then got woken up by, by at time, girlfriend... And then I went back to sleep and she woke me up again and goes, are you going to do this? I'm like, it's boring. <laughs> I mean, I think arguably that's probably like the best one. Oh, that I've well. heard people talk about. Okay. Uh, like the last, the last two are probably the best, but the, like when it's not like so epic and so fantastical, like, right. Yeah. Like that second one uh, was probably like one of the better ones at the time. All right, so that doesn't bode well for me watching any of the other ones then. <laughs> uh, I, I, I do like the series. I've watched them all. Uh, I initially wasn't into them, uh-huh. um, but watching them in order, and I got I definitely got into it. Like, I wouldn't say, like, I'm a huge Harry Potter fan, but, like, I will definitely watch them anytime they're on. If, uh, if they had a marathon of Harry Potter movies from chronological order to, or... Star Wars chronologically ordered, which would you prefer to watch? Uh, I would watch Star Wars. Okay. I thought I thought you were gonna ask me if they had Harry Potter in chronological order or release order versus watching Prisoners of the Ghost Land <laughs> the consecutive number of times to equal the Harry Potter movies, which would you watch? <laughs> well, uh, now now that you've asked that question. What is your answer? Well, it would definitely be Harry Potter. <laughs> Spe- speaking of that, I don't know, Ed, if you remember, but uh, Des, my wife Des was trying to watch all the, the Harry Potters. Oh, uh, yeah, I remember this. She hasn't seen them um, a while ago. And man, was the world against her on that because she 
tried watching them on a streaming service to find out that it only had like the first one, which she's only, you know, she's already seen or something like that. And then, or no, it was like, a, oh, it was, they had it on the streaming service and then she was like a day late because they like, they took them off or whatever and they, the day she decided to watch them. Uh-huh. And then she's like trying to find them on other services and found like, you know, this one, you can buy it here, but you can only buy this one or these two. And then you have to go here to find the other one. And it, so <laughs> she's like, this world just doesn't want me to watch these. No, the uh, studios make good cases for piracy. <laughs> I, right? I will say there there is a good website out there that I use all the time to try to like track down like a movie I'm interested in or a TV show oh. that I'm interested in that I want to watch. It's called justwatch.com. You just type in like whatever movie like The Rock and it'll come back and tell you it's on these services and if you want to rent it it's exactly this much. If you want to buy it it's exactly this much. But here's where you can stream it for free and it's like Peacock ah. or Amazon or whatever. And like it'll tell you exactly like if you just want to stream the movie where you can do that so, most of the time or not most of the time, but like some of the time you will get a it's not streaming anywhere. You have to buy it. But at least right. then, you know. Yeah, see, that was her pro- problem is like spending the, you know, almost hours trying to figure out where, where could I at least watch them? Yeah, <laughs> just watch dot com. Just watch dot com. It's okay. highly accurate. I've. I've yet to see a time where it said it was somewhere that it wasn't. Hmm. Well, I'll to, uh, get that, or uh, look that up. Uh, if you guys want to watch Kung Pao Enter the Fist, uh, you cannot stream it anywhere. It is only to be purchased. <laughs> I mean, maybe you should just buy that. <laughs> I was going to say that's that's a purchasable one. A, you won't I've, be disappointed. It is one of my favorites growing up. I'm sure it doesn't hold up well at all. <laughs> <laughs> but the last time it was on Netflix, I do remember having it on in the background. It's background noise a lot. Sure. So Speaking you said- of old movies, uh, I just was listening to another podcast, and they were talking about the uh, Ninja Turtles, the live action Ninja Turtles movie. Right. They were talking about uh, how the suits apparently have been like, like people, you know, people still have them, but they're like, yes, oh, they're decomposing bad. Yeah. Now. I did not. I didn't even think about it, but it makes sense because they're like that foam rubber kind of thing. And I yep. saw the Donatello one. <laughs> Holy crap! It yeah. is nightmare fuel. Yeah, like um, make uh, that the podcast art. <laughs> <laughs> Just Donatello's face. <laughs> I think I will use that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it, it's either uh, I think it might be Peter Laird, uh, who has one of the original suits. But he had paid someone to actually go and restore it. Restore it, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cool. I was. Now, I saw that. I was looking that up. I was like, oh, cool. That's awesome. But yeah, that Donatello picture is frightening. <laughs> Very much so. It's like a Five Nights at Freddy's. Yes. Creepy. I'm. I'm sure that's where that came from. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it. <laughs> Scott Cawthorn was trying to think of something to make, and he saw that picture, and he's like. Chuck E. Cheese, animatronics. I got it. Nailed it. <laughs> now, Scott, you were saying there were multiple Nick Cage movies? I Yeah. And so uh, probably the one that's probably been talked about the most. Uh, so this is number two of the three. Um, kind of falling in the middle of, 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 of these here. And that's Mandy. Oh. Uh, Mandy is very good. But I think, I think I'm just good with the the one watch <laughs> um it's about two hours okay and like the first hour is dedicated to like character and just world building and all that and then the second half is kind of not only my favorite but it's kind of the part of the movie that pretty much everyone remembers and will talk about um and okay. it's it's hard to talk about with like spoiling but i think it's not necessarily spoiled but i think like it's kind of already given away but basically it's a revenge story. Uh-huh. And the first hour just spends introducing you to all of the characters, getting you attached to Nicolas, Nicolas Cage's uh, character and his, I think, only girlfriend. I don't think they're married. And just kind of like the relationship that they have and, and the things that they have going. And she gets killed uh, brutally in front of him. And he snaps in the the most Nick Cage way, but it's also very like, <laughs> As much as it's amusing to see, it's right. also very heartbreaking because you've spent this hour with them almost. 
Yeah. Um, and so you kind of feel it and you totally understand. So even though it's like way over the top, the way that he's snapping or rage yelling or whatever, like you still feel for him. You still feel for the character. So it's not like and, a superhero origin story. Like, snap. no, no, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's kind of grounded in reality. Um, to say more would actually spoil something, oh, okay. <laughs> but, uh, there, there's, there's a, there's a basis of reality somewhere here. And, uh, he, it's a revenge story at this point. And so it's him methodically John wick style, finding his enemies and eliminating them one by one in like brutalistic fashion with maximum gore. Kukosh. It's totally entertaining, but like that first half is kind of hard to watch because it is so slow. Oh yeah. The second half though, it's kind of like if I were to rewatch this, I would probably just skip up into that point, which is the thing that I also don't do. I don't fast forward movies. I don't like abandon movies either. Um, but it would be the type of thing that I would do for this if I were to rewatch it. But I, it, it was really good. I still recommend it. It's just not my favorite. Um, the third one, however, is called Color Out of Space. Oh, oh I heard that it. one. I've not heard of this Very one. good. Very, very good. This one really landed with me. Uh, he plays a dad of a family in a farmhouse that's kind of like hours and miles away from anything in civilization. Okay. And uh, an, a- like a, uh, an asteroid crash lands in his front yard. And it has very spectral, glowy, spatial anomaly kind of stuff coming out of it. Okay. And from that point, things start to change. And um, this kid kind of his youngest is kind of like able to see things that aren't quite there. And nobody really sees it either. But over time, it seems to have this effect on them oh. and they start seeing and doing things. Uh, also very gory, very disturbing, but highly entertaining. This one I could definitely watch over and over again. I don't want to get too much into it just because uh, of all the crazy things that happen, <laughs> but it is, it's very good. Uh, that, that one really stuck with me. Uh, huh. It just, it was very intriguing. Not quite on the same level as like signs where like you, you only have this very limited perspective of what's going on and things so- like that. But it's, you do get to see the point of view of every character that sees the things that they're going through, but it's, it's really interesting to watch how their personalities are affected by the space rock that lands there. Um, that was yeah, actually the thing that I, I, when I saw that, I don't even know where I saw the trailer, but I was like, man, he's doing signs again. <laughs> I was about to say, it's, it's <laughs> kind of, it's just kind of like it. Not, not so overtly. Like I definitely got hints of it, but it's not, it's not exactly the same, but it is very good. Hmm. Like of the three of these Nick Cage movies that I watched on the service, like was definitely the one that like worked for me. So at no point in the movie did Nicholas Cage get any information from a previous character telling him to swing away. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, he did not swing away. Uh, but he, Nick Cage is very Nick Cage in all three of these movies. Like there's, there are very specific points in each of these movies where it's like the director told him, okay, do your thing for the scene. <laughs> and he did. And it's in every one of these movies. It is wild to me that there's was- these exact same <laughs> moments where he can do very similar, but not exact, uh, like freak outs. I always wonder if it's like, he's like, look, this is my thing. If I'm going to be on this, the, this movie, I got to have at least this amount of time where, I Nick Cage it up. That's my Probably contract. His contract. Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Like that's gotta be it because it's too coincidental. Well, he does it. Okay. I don't say every movie, but every movie that I've watched him in, there is a scene or a section where it's like, okay, this is Nicholas Cage. Like he is not the character anymore. He's not Ghost Rider. He is <laughs> Nicholas Cage right now. <laughs> yeah. True. I, I yeah, it, it probably extends far beyond that, but, just in the in the close span of watching these movies pretty much back to back like, right i it definitely s- stuck out to me and i i don't want to go on a whole thing about everything horror movie that i watch but i will say the best thing that i've watched in this time is summer of 84 summer of 84 it's a period piece obviously 1984 
uh, about a group of kids um, who believe that their neighbor is a serial killer, but don't have a way to prove it. Or they also have difficulty in getting to get the adults to believe them. And it's, it's a thriller straight up. Um, Not very gory, not even, I mean, there's kind of jump scary parts, but they're very um, deliberate and like on purpose, as opposed to just doing it for the sake of a jump, jump scare. Um, Mm -hmm. Very good thriller. Uh, There's kind of like a surprise ending uh, of sorts. It's it's just a twist on what you would expect it to be. Uh, And that works extremely well for it. And it, and it easily the best thing that I've watched. You can only buy it um, unless you watch it on the streaming services. What I could see. Mm. So like you could buy the Blu-ray or the DVD or whatever, um, or you can just watch it on Shutter. But I highly recommend it. it. is It is very very good. The soundtrack to the visuals to just how the kids are portrayed. Um, you know, you've got like these 12, 14 year olds in this movie playing teens of, you know, the mid eighties and you kind of don't, it's, it's very much kind of like a stranger things thing where like you, you, they do it really well. The soundtrack fits the aesthetic, you know, looks the part, but obviously these kids had no idea what it was like to be in the eighties, right? but it feels (laughs) like it when you watch it. So they're good actors and actresses. (laughs) Totally. Very convincing. Uh, and it's just really well done. Uh, so uh, one character in this movie is Rich Summer, who was the main character in Firewatch, if you played that. Oh, I have not played that, but I, I am familiar. That's OK. Yeah, Keegan played a little bit of that. Yeah. Firewatch is great. Firewatch is also one of those games where, like, it sets up to go in one direction. But at the end, it, it you know, it, it makes 90s. a drastic turn. <laughs> Uh, well, not so much that, but I mean, like, there, I don't know. It's been like six years, <laughs> eight years since that game came out. Basically, the game kind of directs you towards like a serial killer, like a uh, uh, government cover up kind of thing going on here. But it's it's not that at all. It's just there's a missing kid and a grieving father. And like, it's just it, it, it pulls a 180 and it's, it's just got this twist that like when I first played it, I was kind of bummed. I was kind of wish they just went all the way with it. But oh. as the years have gone on, I've, I've gone to respect how it went. Um, Almost like but, you respect the restraint from them actually yeah, going that way. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I guess summer of 84 is a little bit different than that. Like I'm, I'm actually more in favor of the direction that they went in at the end than the way that it seemed to have gone um so a little reversal there but summer of 84 i highly highly recommend well there you go all you podcast listeners uh if you like uh horror or i guess horror adjacent also thriller um, yeah like it's a, it's a thriller yeah um, there you go thriller. it's mostly a thriller if you like michael jackson <laughs> just beat it <laughs> no oh god <laughs> 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 all right well Oh, well, why don't we move on? Let's do that. Eric. Me. Since we're talking about some movies, has there been anything you've been watching? Uh, there's not been any movies that I've been watching. Um, there's actually one that, you know, we both we both went to, but I'll let you talk about that one. Um, sure. <clears throat> I mean, why don't you go ahead and do it now? That way it okay. just gets it out of the way. Yeah, so we went, uh, the family went to a drive-in uh, movie theater. Yes. And uh, we saw Thor, Love and Thunder, and it was a double feature, which had Lightyear at the end of it. Yes. And um, I liked them. I I, I don't <laughs> mind the Thor movies. I've, I've liked the Thor movies. I like the comedy. Yeah, they've you gotten know. better as time's I, gone on. I, yeah. I've liked the, th- the third Thor movie. I, I haven't seen four yet, but uh, one and two were... Very hard to watch. One is a hard watch. Yes. Two is like a, I don't really want to watch it, but you can see that they were trying to make the Thor character a little more comedic in that one. And then yeah. with uh, Taika Waititi, 
uh, in the third one, they definitely they really got it. Yeah, yeah, the, they nailed that character. Uh, and I feel like this the fourth one here, uh, Love and Thunder, actually takes that formula and kind of runs with it. But I don't know. I think I enjoy the story of Ragnarok better than this one. I think the seriousness of Ragnarok. Um, this is just for me. I think the seriousness of Ragnarok um, with the comedy of Thor and, and the characters is, is works well together. And I think because the uh, this one was a like Gore the God Butcher was more emotional instead of, uh, you know, like the world burning and just like this natural disaster kind of thing. Uh, it, it, it doesn't work as well, in my opinion. I mean, the the movie is still very good. It's just that uh, it was like a whole a, very, a lot of emotional with um, with the um, a comedy that that doesn't it seems to clash sometimes. Uh, yeah, I mean, but I think they do. I think he did a good job of kind of mixing the two without it being like, you know, it's full one, you know, comedy over here. Then it's a hard shift uh, to something serious. I think there's enough like leeway in between that you can. Get your mindset right. Uh, I think also for us, Eric, uh, it didn't help that the drive-in used original 1950 speakers, which they tried to sell as like a selling point. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, hey, these speakers are the original speakers from 19, you know, whatever, 50, 60. 52, uh, I think it was. Yeah. And they cost a lot of money, so don't break them. And I know me and Eric are sitting there like, why don't you just keep the shells and put some better stuff on the inside? <laughs> exactly. Because like, it was a little hard to hear. Well, uh, it also didn't help points. that we were it, so we were in the back of the uh, or outside of the vehicle, like at the tailgate. Um, but there was also vehicles still on that were on because oh, yeah. it was raining. So if those vehicles weren't on, we would have been we would have heard them fine. Uh, but because they were on, it was at like outside noise with the speaker inside the vehicle. It it just kind of drowned each other out. Right. Have you been to a a, a drive-in, uh, Scott? Yeah, but the ones that I've been to uh, just give you like a radio station to tune into, so you you get to use the audio from your your vehicle to to kind of give you what you want. Right. Um, yeah. This one this one had that too. Um, you could do the station or the speaker. Oh. Okay. Uh, we both yeah, found we, out that our phones don't have an FM tuner in them. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, my phone has an FM tuner. Oh, right. But Yours Verizon does. does not allow the FM tuner to be unlocked. Interesting. Yeah. Because Verizon sucks. Because <laughs> our thought was, well, okay, well, why don't we just put an FM tuner on the phone mm-hmm. and just listen to it with the phone in our lap? Nope. <laughs> Didn't yeah. work out like that. Of course but, not. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd give Thor, uh, if you were to rank the four movies, it'd be like second. Ragnarok would be first. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and, yeah. That seems reasonable. Lightyear I enjoyed. I, I know Lightyear was getting a little bit of some, I don't know, hate. Hate seems a strong word for this. but It was getting some flack. Yeah. And hey, flack. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a nice, fun kids movie. I think... This one should have been a Disney Plus rather than a theater release. Yes. It just watching the movie, it feels more like a Disney Plus release than a, a like Turning Red should have been theater. This one should have been Disney Plus. Like I'm yeah, I, Turning Red was great. Yeah. Like I feel like the not pomp and circumstance, but just like the, the just the feeling around the movie when you're when you're watching it, the light year feels more like it's made for TV. <laughs> yeah, well, <clears throat> I'm for. I mean, I guess made for TV is probably the best way of like really explaining it. But like the way when I was watching it, it it felt very much like a um watch it and then I can go make dinner and oh yeah, not really feel like I missed something, right? Um, that kind of movie. Whereas like you know, a, a in theater movie, I'm like I'm invested, I'm watching, I'm paying attention um, throughout most of it, if not all of it, and I, I don't want to leave. And then. Story wise, like the story is actually not bad. It's just, you know, I, it, it's OK. But it does open up some weird questions. <laughs> yeah. 
because like obviously this is the movie that Andy saw to get him to buy this Buzz Lightyear toy. But then the toy has its own backstory, which is not really the same as the backstory of this movie. So was the toy first and then they made a a movie adaptation or was the movie first and then they made the toy and he got some sort of like knockoff toy or something. Yeah, yeah, because the the stories don't match up. And typically when you have a movie toy, you know, the the story for that toy is going to be whatever it's the movie it's from. Uh, versus where okay so this would be more like you buy toys for like the spider-man movie uh versus okay you're buying he-man toys and now there's a a he-man movie out that has nothing to do with the toy line (laughs) right kind of like one of those like they made the toy or they they made the movie and the toy at the same time but the toy shipped earlier because the movie got delayed so then they made a change to the movie so now the toy has one type of story and the movie had a slight change in the story yeah yeah uh i I mean i think that's a lot to do with why people have been kind of against is just because it's so at odds with everything that we've seen prior about what that character is sure yeah and i honestly i think it does leave some holes right the the story but it's not glaringly bad um i still feel like in that world is it can be very much canon uh that you know that toy was made off of this movie it's just a few there are a few things where it's like well that doesn't really make sense with what what the toy world um existed in um but then again i was thinking about it later ed that the the story that you get from toy story from buzz is of a different perspective of the the evil Zer, 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 Zer. It's a different perspective, right? Because it's like a long running battle. Yeah. Versus this one, it's a first time meetup. Yeah. So I almost wonder if maybe the tell off to that is, you know, the first time meetup wasn't the the first the actual first time meeting that version of Zer. Where there is actually a different version of Zerg that the toy line is is speaking to. Sure, yeah, you know, not not to spoil anything, you know, they 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 end up with you know a certain ending, and it's like, okay, well, I guess you can still continue like some of the ancillary media that they've done before, like the the, the cartoon show and everything. Yeah, and it's like, okay, well, the cartoon show is not showing. At least I don't think it did. Like their first meetup, and this could be that first time that they meet. It's just really weird how the, <laughs> how how it all happened. It's um, a little, yeah, it is a little off putting. I think they could have gone a different route. But again, like you said, it's it's definitely did not it did not feel like a cinema released. It felt like a uh, Disney Plus, you know, put together kind of setup, which doesn't make it bad. It just it just felt not quite as produced, I guess. Well, yeah, it, you get, I don't know the best way to describe it. You know, it's just a feeling. It's like, you know, it's not a as bad as like a straight to VHS or straight to TV type of thing. It just has a different feel to it. It's like, well, this would have been a much more compelling watch on my home TV than on the big screen. Yeah. Yeah. Now, granted, we did watch Lightyear at what? Like, it was probably 12 at night. 12 <laughs> by the, Yeah. So it was late. <laughs> Wait, so it was on second? Yes. Yeah, it was on second. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, shouldn't so, it have been reversed so that like the kids have something to watch until that's maybe what they get we tired, said. Fall okay. That's okay. what we oh, okay. Oh, it's you're a double, love it. It's a double screen. So one screen is what we were watching, and there was a second screen behind us. Yep. Can you guess what the double feature was for that one? I'll give you a hint. One of them was minions. Can oh. you can you guess what the second one was? Uh, um, <laughs> it has dinosaurs. And I'll tell you, the second oh, one... Oh, yeah, Jurassic Park, right? Yes. Okay. And I think Jurassic Park was first. <laughs> Jurassic Park was first, then it was Minions, I believe. <laughs> so I don't know why they did that. <laughs> I I fully felt like, okay, it should have been Thor and Jurassic Park and Minions and Lightyear. Right. Although I can, yeah. 
I can see why, because you got two Disney properties. Um, right. But still, it's like, well, that doesn't seem right. <laughs> <laughs> the order yeah. is definitely backwards. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, but it was it was fun. It, it was uh, we like going to that uh, drive in. Um, it's family owned. It's an older drive in. So it's it's not like it, it is like a cinder block paneling. Um, yeah for their screen so it's okay. it's older um and like i said family owned so you know it's they've closed down twice uh and handed over ownership and you know just keep it up and running it's it's worth it because it's the closest one yeah an hour I mean, or so two hours other than the rain you know if it wasn't for the rain it probably would have been like a really nice experience although the uh the rain did help cool things off being that it's been pretty hot up in our area yeah that's one of those where I, I go maybe i should get one of those rv or uh suv tents oh yeah <laughs> to cover from uh, that. yeah but um <clears throat> other than that uh movie wise that's what we've been watching um while ed was up uh i'll let you talk about that one uh i would talk about <laughs> batman batman Unbur- uh, unburied I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Um, no, it is no. a. I get. I mean, it's on like Spotify, I believe, and and you know, as like a podcast. But it's really more like you know those old serials. Oh, you know, you know what? No, I I have heard about this because I've heard some podcast ads uh, advertise yeah. this. Huh. So, Des found it, and um, it's 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 unique. I find it really impelling, uh, compelling. Compelling. Because it's Batman, but he's not, he's Bruce Wayne, but his parents aren't dead. He's not Batman. He's, he's a, uh, what is it? Oh, shoot. Not a coroner, but a, um, shoot. I can't remember what it's called, but he, he does forensics on the dead medical bodies. Examiner? Like a medical examiner, but he, he, it's, he's like, a he's, he's also a, a he's detective. CSI. <laughs> Kind, yeah, kind of, but not, yeah, he's kind of like a CSI, but he, he specifically works with the dead, right? The the dead body. So he's trying to find out, like 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 Scott said, kind of like the medical examiner, but he has a little more leeway in that he's more detective also. So he has, he's not just finding what happened to the body, but he's also like researching into it and investigating the actual crime. Um, And like, let's say they should totally do a CSI gotham and have whoever plays batman just pretty much do a david caruso (laughs) (laughs) yeah um and it's so again because it's because it's like a serial right it's not there's no visuals it's all it's all audio uh audio um it's really engaging the one thing that i have found that is a little off-putting is because it's all audio and he is a medical or he, he is a um uh, at the beginning, you know, dealing with dead bodies, he's right. also you know dissecting them, and they're very heavy on the squishy noises and like Ew. and like the yeah, like mm. he really he's a like cor- talks about getting into the body and then you hear <laughs> so <laughs> it's like uh. a coroner ASMR, kind of yeah actually all right all right, <laughs> but um. It's it's pretty enticing. I've only heard, we've only done I think the first two, maybe three, um, and I think they're about an hour long. Um, but it's really I, I find it really well well written uh, written and, and acted. Um, mm-hmm. and it's pretty engaging, and I'm pretty sure it is, they have the same vo- or the um, voice of Zavala, the guy who does Zavala um, in Destiny. Oh, is um is Batman's dad He's or Bruce pop. Wayne's dad? He's a he's an actual prominent actor, so yeah, I, don't I don't know his name his though. Name. Lance Reddick. Yes, yes, that's is it, that's who okay. it is. Because he also doesn't he also do um, Silence in uh, Horizon. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm pretty sure it's the same guy. If not, it sounds almost identical to him. <laughs> All um, right. What about um, what about games? Games. Okay. So. I finally finished the Dance Recital video, so I've been able to actually play some games. Hooray. Um, 
And speaking of silence from Horizon, uh, I beat the game. <laughs> it took me forever, right. but I did beat Forbidden West. Um, it's a big game. It is a good game. It's a fun game. Uh, it it's one of those games that like you know I love playing because it just it hits all of the collection notes. It hits all of like you know the the fighting that I the, that I want and story. Um, the Got story dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. <laughs> Robo dinosaurs. Yeah. Uh, the story ends kind of where I expected it to, mm-hmm. um, but I am a little sad about how they leave the se- the you know another one open and and how it works because it's just like okay, well it seems more of the same thing, just in a different wrapper. Uh, yeah, but other than that, it was a good game. I still need to finish the first one and kind of get into West, but at the same time, the combat just didn't click with me so. I feel like if it takes I did, a while. yeah, that's and that's what I hear from everybody. It's like it takes a little bit. I I hate anybody who tells me that like it takes ten to twelve hours and then you get into it. But that's kind of the case for Horizon <laughs> Zero Dawn. Is like it's not that long. It's probably half the time. But it's like it takes a while to get used to how that combat works. But when, yeah, once you get it though, like it is, you don't even think about it after that. You just do it, and it's fun, and it's. It's like these like mini mini monster hunter moments of like taking down these these huge creatures to to move on to the next thing. Yeah, so it's the the world and the backstory and like just just everything going on in like uh you know Zero Dawn. That's cool. And like I want to know more about it, but actually having to traverse everything and running into these robots who I have to hit weak points. <laughs> And sometimes they're annoying to the point where I just want to, you know, I'm done. <laughs> uh, I mean, you can capitalize on weak points, but it's not a necessity. No. Yeah. You can still so, brute force your way to, to taking them down. But um, that's what I did. <laughs> I, I so I love the first game very specifically because it takes place mostly in Colorado. Colorado. So like, it's cool, like seeing like this proposed future of like what things could look like of yeah the areas of where i live but uh there's a really good story behind it it's just kind of a shame that it's only about like halfway through the game where they really let you in on what's going on but it is by far the most fascinating thing about it oh yeah oh yeah well like so like i played i played it on the easy mode because you know i'm a dad and i have don't have time (laughs) uh (laughs) who cares (laughs) right (laughs) um but yeah, so the one thing, the one biggest drawback or dislike I have of the game is the arrow system. The, the I like the first game where it wasn't like different bows for the type. Like, you know, this bow, like in this and then in um, Forbidden West, you had to use the bow that used that could do fire or poison or something like that. You know, I mm-hmm. just liked having a hunter bow and uh, you know, quick bow and the sharp shooter bow, and then you just change your arrow. Um, that made more sense to me. So I actually literally picked a bow, the a hunter bow and a sharp shot or sharp shoot bow, and I used those about three quarters of the way until I got like the legendary bows, and then that I used the rest of that. <laughs> like I I did not use anything else. Sure, okay, go with what works. <laughs> See, like the the game like introduced you to all these different like weapon types and things. And, mm-hmm. like, one of them was like traps yep. and stuff. I never bothered with any of that. Mm-hmm. Yep. And I don't think you're the only one too. Like I heard a lot of people say the same things. Like they just they didn't bother with certain things. And traps was the one I seem to remember most people saying. Like yeah, I didn't even. <laughs> well, they're just not really. Eff- I mean, they can be effective, but that's all about like if you kite the the robot to an area, or. You know, if you're watching their path and then you want to set a trap, but like I'm most of the time I could have just walked up and stealth killed them by the time I had set the trap and watched them walk into it. Yeah. <laughs> More efficient. Sure. Um, but fun game. Enjoyed it. Um, I'm kind of I'm looking forward to the to the net or the Netflix series. Um, I don't know if you guys have heard anything more about it, but they actually have a, a name in a story for that uh, horizon 2070 something Netflix series. Huh. Yeah. I feel like I heard of it once, but I've totally forgotten. since. 
<laughs> well, basic. So my understanding of what I was reading on it is it's it's talking about the uh, fall of man, right, to the robots and like what led up to it, that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And it sounds like they're going to start off with like having Aloy or not necessarily Aloy, but like in the quote unquote present. And it's like a story being told. So like they get that like, you know, nowadays feel and then we're going to the going to the, the pre- uh, past. And that's where most of it's going to seem to take so take place. Okay. But it seems pretty from what they've released. It looks pretty interesting. All right. <clears throat> but other than that, uh, played a little bit of the Turtles Shredder's Revenge with you and the kids. That was yeah. a fun game. Um, that is- it's worth it. I love that game. It is so, so it's good. A, it, it's one of those things that I'm going to just keep installed forever. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just to have it just, you know, you can pull it up anytime. It's such a small like footprint. Like you just load it up whenever and it yeah. boots right in. Um, uh, It is. It kind of gets a little. Uh, I don't know. Messy is not a good word, but. uh. It, it, there's a lot of things happen at once when you have multiple players on screen. So I'm glad that they pulled the camera out a little bit versus like your, you know, old, older style where there's only four players. Uh, but it's still a lot of fun, a lot of chaos, just a lot of like good times. <laughs> and playing with the kids was really good because they were having a lot of fun with it. Oh, yeah, they were loving it. They were definitely loving it. Uh, Maris was like it, but they, Maris also liked the Ninja Turtles. She's a Ninja Turtle fiend. She likes Ninja Turtles. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, and she actually we showed her the uh, live actions, and she watched most of the first one. She wasn't really scared of it. Keegan was. <laughs> <laughs> the first I mean, really one sickly. is kind of is not hard to watch necessarily, but it is. It's, it's a little creepy. It's just so different. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it wasn't until uh, probably this year that I found out people don't like the second one. What? That is yeah. like the best one. That's the best that's, one. That's Apparently what I people thought. did it. There's a lot of people that disliked it. Yeah, I was like, Weird. "Whoa, what?" Like, you know, like, the first that's... one's good, a little slow, but the second one is definitely where it's at. <laughs> yeah, it's where it hits its peak, and it definitely was the peak cuz the third one was ooh. We don't talk about the third one. <laughs> there isn't a third one. <laughs> is it Bruno? <laughs> I don't know who you're talking I, about. I, I, I said this on Quick Save last time, but I said um, Dot Emu needs to be in charge of remaking the Simpsons arcade. <gasps> yes. Yes. That would be great. It'd be amazing. Well, theoretically. I mean, they did so well in this one, you would assume. Yeah, but- if you apply that same style and talent and right yeah i would love to see that i would really love to see that and simpsons has such a big cast of characters that like six player co-op or you know not only that but like you could have a roster of like 10 to 15 characters or something that you could play as oh yeah i mean that would work up there's just so many characters to choose from like you could have uh you know a a game like that or you could have a game like a, a smash brothers (laughs) <laughs> where they have just so many characters to pull from. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, other than that, uh, we got... Oh, the family got back into Minecraft uh, Stoneblock 2. It's a Feed the Beast mod. Um, yeah. It's, it's fun. It's that, like, collecting, trying to figure things out thing. Um, it's kind of our fallback to when we, you know, <laughs> have run out of multiplayer games that we want to play or something. Yeah. Like, yep, let's get back into Minecraft and start digging blocks and <laughs> making rooms and the make- original um <laughs> what is it called? Um number simulator or whatever it's called, not number simulator. Survival. Uh, those, no, the the ones where you just like let it go and watch the number count up. <laughs> oh, um uh idle. Idle simulator. that's what it is, yeah. Idle. What idle games. Of- um, and then the last one that <clears throat> I want to talk about a, just a little bit is uh, Fishing North Atlantic. Uh-huh. Uh, that was a free game on um, Amazon Prime. <laughs> Prime. That's what it was. Amazon Prime. And, you know, I'm a simulator guy and I'm a fishing guy. So I went, why not? It's actually not bad. 
I mean, you gotta like, you gotta like that kind of thing, uh, where like you know you're doing a lot of repetitive things because like right now I'm on I'm, I'm a lobster fishing. That's where the beginning of it is, <laughs> and yeah, basically you let the boat go, you drop the pot, then you gotta put a pot, put the bait in it, close the pot, drop the pot, then you do that. Then you wait 24 hours and come back and do the same thing, but in reverse. So, you know, take everything. You take the lobsters out, measure them, put them all out. So it's, it's just, it's a job. <laughs> you got you to gotta like. At the end of the day, like. yes. <laughs> it is a simulation of a job. Right. It, it 100% is. And um, it's just one of those things where it's like, I've always found that type of job interesting, but my tan butt is never going to be on a boat <laughs> to do it. So this is my safe way of doing it. <laughs> so did, I think you were telling me you had named your boat something. <laughs> yeah, funny. I named my boat. I named my boat fish stick. OK. And, and then my my uh, uh, captain is uh, Gordon's fisherman. Perfect. <laughs> but not not <laughs> gore tons gore done. Oh, but. yeah, you wouldn't want to infringe. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> just <laughs> in case. Those. Just in case. You never know. They might be looking. Yeah. Now, this is what Gordon Ramsay does in retirement. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then when he gets to the lobster that's too small, he just curses at it and said, you're garbage. He's, scr- <laughs> He's screaming at the water. <laughs> <laughs> you don't it's, know risotto. <laughs> it's raw. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, so that's what I've been doing. All right, well, what you up? I, you know, we've we pretty much covered most of like the things that I've been doing. So uh, I'll just kind of go over everything, skip over everything, I should say, and just get to some interesting stuff. You know, I. So over oh, the what, what we said wasn't interesting. Is that what you're saying? Uh, that's usually what he says. Yeah, that's about some of it. You know, I I talk and he goes, yeah, that was cute, but now the real stuff. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm important. <laughs> so, so, I had a nice long vacation for the 4th and spent some time with Eric and the family. So, you know, the Shredder's Revenge and Minecraft, we watched Thor. Uh, we got into, uh, they were telling me about Umbrella Academy. I don't have Netflix. Yeah. So, while I was up there, we pretty much um, binged all three seasons and I really, I really enjoyed uh, all all three seasons. It's a pretty good show, so I'm curious to see where a season four ends up going. Um, did, have you watched any of that, Scott? I have not. I did like it's one of those things where I don't know enough about it that I'm not gonna like try to watch it. Yeah, I was <laughs> in the same boat. It's like okay, I, I know this has something to do with comics, and this has something in. That might pique my interest, but I'm not going to go out and, you know, actively search for it. But then uh, Eric and Des were telling me about it, uh, you know, how the first two seasons were really good. So then while I was up there, they were like, yeah, let's just go ahead, put on the seasons, catch back up and then finish up because they didn't finish season three. So it all worked out. And I I really liked it. So it was a really good watch. Um, Other than that. That's pretty much all the entertainment stuff that I've been doing. Uh, (laughs) Maybe playing some more Animal Crossing and having uh, my mother backseat game uh, telling me that (laughs) I'm not doing, I'm not playing the game the right way. Okay, so first off, they're like billionaires in the game because they put so much time into it. Uh, They're straight up, they're straight up like Jeff Bezos or Bezos and and, massive tycoons. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like, so there's a whole stock market, haha, uh, uh, where you you buy turnips and then you trade them in, uh, or you sell them in later on in the week for high, different fluctuating prices. The highest that the prices go is like 600 uh, bells per turnip. Now, these two, <laughs> they have enough money that they could hold, they could pay... Any of the our friends or acquaintances who are also playing this game, instead of just being like, okay, well, we're going to go find a town that has 600 bells to trade in your turnips to, uh, 
They could just literally go here. We're going to give everybody a thousand bells per their turn up and they'd mm-hmm. still be rich <laughs> because they put well, so much time in the game. Like, I swear their switch said they put like 20,000 hours on each account. And my mom plays two different accounts and uh, our dad plays like two different accounts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> two. Yep, yes. <laughs> two. Well, they bought a second switch just so my dad could play s- separately. Oh, yes, exactly. Uh, and then, um, uh, my niece, Eric's daughter has a, um, an account on one of them. So (laughs) mom also hops on that account and, and tries to, you know, get bells and collect things. And so, uh, you know, again, I'm glad they found something they enjoy and something that they can both play. Uh, and you know, every once in a while I can hop in and play with them, but boy, it's a lot of time to be tossing into uh animal crossing <laughs> right and it's always funny because like i'll be like they'll talk be talking about it and i go i'll talk to dad and be like so uh what do you buy with all that money and he goes whatever i want and that <laughs> would be <laughs> and then he just kind of pauses i don't know right <laughs> you're just like you're you like to watch the numbers go up right <laughs> The most the most I've played like any one game is probably only around three hundred hours. That's about it. You know, that's probably roughly about mine. Yeah, mine was Witcher four hundred and something hours. Witcher uh, three. I seem to remember the a six hundred figure number for something. I cannot remember what it is. It might have been something like Forza, Forza, uh, but Forza, Forza. <laughs> That makes sense. That would 100% make sense. Like, it might have been like Motorsport 4 or something. I don't remember. Uh, But yeah, there was... I remember looking at my game's play chart and like something was up there. Way, way up there. Uh, Probably the last game that I put so much time into was like Valhalla. Almost near 200 hours. Before DLC. Yeah, that makes sense. So you could you could sink a lot of time into Val. Oh yeah, yeah, those those games easily. So I got back in today, and that's why we're doing the podcast today. And I find a surprise on my doorstep when I get to my apartment. That's never good. <laughs> so I get here, and there's a cup right in front of my door, <laughs> and it's full, and there's like ants all over the place. Mm. And I'm like, what the heck is? It's a Wawa cup. And I turned around to look at the label. It's a DoorDash for Wawa. Uh, Someone oh. had ordered a a milkshake. Ooh. And the DoorDash person just left it there. And well, I mean, that's their job. I assume there was a sandwich <laughs> because there was also uh, lettuce and tomato fragments. Oh. Fragments. <laughs> there's no wrapper. There's no sandwich. <laughs> Just fragments. So, uh, needless to say, uh, since there's no outdoor uh, garbage can, I just moved that past my door (laughs) and let someone else deal with it. (laughs) That's very American. It's not your responsibility. (laughs) Right. It's like, okay, why? Like, I kind of wish I was home just so I can be like, ooh, free milkshake. (laughs) Right? Who takes the sandwich but not the milkshake? Uh, Yeah, that seems like a, I I would grab the milkshake over the sandwich any day. Yeah, so I, it also makes you think, okay, if they didn't grab the milkshake, there's a reason why. It might have been sitting there too long. But then at the True. same time, why are you going to get a... If you saw the two together, and you saw the milkshake had melted, that sandwich is probably no good. <laughs> right. I mean... Unless it was like a raccoon or a squirrel or something, which... Could explain why there are bits and pieces of tomato and lettuce. Yeah, but you would definitely see. <laughs> you need a doorbell cam. Pe- <laughs> yeah, you do. You need a. Uh, yeah, well, you I've... can't put one of those, can you? Yeah, yeah. The the uh, gentleman ac- across the way from me has one. Oh, so he may so get the video from him. He <laughs> right? What happened? <laughs> I know, right? Maybe he took the same. <laughs> oh, maybe. Yeah, if like, he doesn't want to give you the file. <laughs> then, then he's definitely the one. He's the he's suspect. <laughs> Just tape a, a note on his door that says, "I know what you did." <laughs> <laughs> that seems to be a bad. Anything could happen there. 
So other than finding this weird surprise on my door, the the only thing that just kind of weirded me out when I got back in town is um are you guys familiar with these bird um scooters? Yes. What? <laughs> no, I am not. Okay. So Scott's familiar. Uh so for you, Eric, these are scooters that you can rent through an app and they calculate your mileage and everything or your time or whatever it is. And that's how you, you can rent these to go around town. When you're okay. done, you just park them where you left them. Just anywhere. Oh, okay. Cause I guess I got a GPS on it. Yes. So I don't live in the downtown area of my city. Uh, and they've been kind of like relegated to just that area. Because the downtown part of the city is closer to some of the bigger cities on the uh, the the eastern board of Virginia here, and I got in today, went over to my office, and they were just there was ten of them sitting at an intersection. Now I mm, I have an issue with these, not that they provide transportation for people who need it. I have an issue with them just lying around everywhere, right? That seems almost like yeah. waste <laughs> or junk. Because these 10 were on the corner of an intersection blocking the walkway. Yeah, see, that's what, where I had, when you said that, I had an issue with. Because it's like, okay, they have a GPS, great. But when do they come to get them? They don't. So, that, yeah. The way it works <laughs> is, okay, I ride one of those from my office to here. I park it outside. And then whenever someone needs one, they'll see, oh, there's one over here. That's it. <laughs> see, I get the intent is that, you know, you're supposed to be respectful and whatnot where you park it. But yeah. people aren't. <laughs> no. Nope. Not <laughs> at all. So, like, downtown where they've been there for a while, like, every other corner is just one of those things. They're not even standing up. They're laying flat. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll find them in like the side of the road where the emergency lane is you'll find them in the grass uh you'll find them in people's yards it's like it it is not doing what you thought it would do my solution would be uh this company would need to go through pick certain intersections throughout the city and make little like bike carts just for them so that's where people have to return them to and then they can walk the rest of the way a station yeah which is what they've done in like New York and stuff like that with other like bike scooter things like that. There's a charging station that you drop it off at and that's where you, you know, pick them up, rent them or, you know, pay your bill, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense. <laughs> so I, I hope at some point someone brings this issue up to like the local city government and somebody there can do something about it because the city's manager. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Um, and I don't know. Other than that, they're just going to be an eyesore and uh, a safety hazard until somebody does something about it. <laughs> like need, real birds. You just need to get yeah, a Karen. Exactly, like a real bird. <laughs> yeah, you just need to get a Karen to, to yeah. dislike yeah. it and they'll talk. They'll get there. Just have a, a Karen show up at a, a council meeting or something. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, now that we're an hour and 30-some minutes in. <laughs> so, that's you know, no one really would like to keep things to a nice little hour, but hey, you know, we've been gone for, I think it's three weeks at this point, so. Almost, yeah. Yeah, you know, cut us a little bit of slack. And a, and a special guest such as myself tends to make these things run longer anyway. Right. Oh, you know what I forgot? To, I forgot to go grab an alcoholic mm-hmm. beverage. So I could celebrate our 21st. Oh, I thought you oh. had one. Um, no, I had some tea. <laughs> <laughs> well, that doesn't count. <laughs> it does not count. Uh, you know what, Eric? Why don't you introduce the question while I go get a, a beverageino, as a, a one of our cousins so elegantly <laughs> put it. Taylor loves to put it. A beverageino. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> uh, so our topic is... Remake versus remaster. Is one better than the other? And I guess to start out, as uh, 
a definition maybe of uh what a difference between a remake and a remaster is okay uh so for like me my understanding is and and scott you may be better at to answer that but uh, a remake is remaking the game from ground up so more or less ground up so they're doing something that's changing the game in a fundamental way whereas a remaster is visual bugs um glitches things like that and then making it high a better fidelity for a newer console or something uh, a newer device um so that that's the differences that i i, I see as the, the difference between a remake and a remaster so i i kind of disagree with the the remake thing because okay. there's also a third part of this that's not part of this question where there's a reimagining so oh. a reimagining takes the game remakes it but it's also changing how it works final fantasy 7 <laughs> final fantasy 7 uh the new god of war 2018s like it is it is a continuation of the story but it is also a remake or it's all uh, also a uh reimagining <clears throat> okay so that and that would be why it's not a reboot because it is right. a continuation. We we could also consider the reboot as a fourth element to all of this. Oh sure, but remake is is more about doing everything from scratch, remaking everything that isn't just like uprising textures because that's kind of the quote air quotes like easy part. Um, <laughs> the remake is about redoing everything at a higher fidelity while also maintaining probably the exact same story or. The okay. voice acting like they, they keep like the audio files for the for the, uh, you know, the characters and whatnot. An example of that would be um, either the the most recent Destroy All Humans. That was a complete remake level for level, exactly the same. But they kept like the audio files of the original voice actors so that they didn't have to recast or re-record. I got you. So would you it was say- like one shortcut? Right. Would you say like something where like uh like um quality of life additions would you, would that would that be in, inserted into like a remake? So things that yeah, wouldn't I necessarily so. change the game, but like just would make it easier on on the user. Yeah, for sure. Okay. okay because that, that you are sense. making it for as if it never existed, but you're making it in the exact same way that it was. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So. I'm, I mean, I think there's a, a reason for both, obviously. Uh, yeah. But I'm, I'm of the ilk of I'd rather have a remake than a remaster. Um, just because you tend, it's for me, it seems like you tend to find uh, a remake because it's built from the ground up, uh, is more cohesive, co- cohesive, um, and you don't get as many like artifacting and, and kind of like, glitchiness to it whereas a remaster if there was a glitch <clears throat> in the game previously they're prob they may not fix it they may it all depends on how bad the glitch is that kind of thing um and you know there usually isn't quality of life stuff with me remastered yeah like so the the remasters i tend to not i look at it and i'm like did they do did they do the necessary to work to make this playable for like a modern you know yada 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 um and you typically no it's just like here's the higher res graphics uh in a remake i look and i i tend to see those more favorably because those end up being something that you know they do throw a little more uh umph in like the graphics or controls update things to to make it more not modern but something that plays more modern uh reboot i tend to not if i see reboot <laughs> i get skeptical <laughs> yep instant yeah. instant go mm, do i yeah. want that and the reimagine is kind of like a like, i guess you could say it's kind of like a newer thing where you know like final fantasy 7 uh is a good example it, it starts off doing a remake of the original game because it's all in 3d now but it's following the story and then they just take a hard left (laughs) right and they're doing something totally different now 
So it's like now they're reimagining what this game would be. Um, See, yeah. I was I always called that kind of like timelining, right? <laughs> Saying, okay, well, this is the game, but it's a different timeline. Sure, so it's, it's it's not the the universe you previously played. Yeah, you know, it, and I can see. Uh, it, it, for me, it all depends on the story. If the story's okay, and they don't, you know, lean too heavily into like, hey, we're changing everything of the one that you uh-huh. really loved, then you know, I, I might be okay with that. Uh, but typically, if I'm buying something that is a re whatever. <laughs> <laughs> of a property uh typically i want to play that property just better so like uh what's a good way to like so the the gta are uh, remasters that they did mm-hmm. i don't want to play another high res version of you know san andreas or vice city as good as those games are i've played those games a bunch i don't need the better higher fidelity uh original graphics what i would want is them to take the uh to take the gta 5 engine and then remake it (laughs) sure or like with red dead red dead you would think and this is kind of topical because rockstar just said oh yeah we're we're not going to do red dead uh one remake or (laughs) remaster uh or gta 4 because nobody bought the uh that new collection they did. Right. That they failed on. That they messed up. <laughs> well, right. they didn't mess it up. The people that they outsourced to do it messed <laughs> up and they didn't QA it properly or whatever. Like I I'm not super clear on the details there, but yeah. Rockstar didn't do their due diligence to make sure that it worked. That's for at, sure. At but the they end had of the no day, real hand in it. But at the end of the day, though, it was their product. They put it out. Yes. They, they failed. should have been better yeah. about it for sure. Oh, yeah. And you would think the takeaway from that would be, oh, okay, either we don't get them to do another one, or everybody's complaining about this, we should focus on making this better. But instead, it, it fe- when, they, when they put out that press release, it really felt more like, well, you guys didn't buy it, so we're not going to do it. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's they blamed called, everyone but themselves. Yeah. Right. It's called corporate mentality. <laughs> right? It's the... Let's put it out there, and if they want it, they'll buy it. If they don't want it, they won't buy it. Well, what if it's bad? Well, that's irrelevant. Yeah, that's, that's irrelevant. Not, that's not the sample size. that we're, That's not the data we're looking for. It's either they want it or they don't. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, to get back to uh, what, I was, uh, what I was mentioning, is like they already have the whole map for Red Dead uh, uh-huh. 1. In already 2. In 2. Other yep. than, like, the parts of Mexico, uh... You would think that's a good baseline to start. Take the engine, take the map. You know, obviously you're going to have to spend some time with the, uh, you know, re-scripting of everything. They have all the original voice lines and, I'm, you know, the audio for that is still pretty okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's just, you would think that would be such an easy home run for them. But I'm sure... On their end, they're looking at the books and be like, well, it's going to cost this much and we don't want to pay this much. (laughs) Well, and also, I guess you got to look at it, too, is like, you know, how well GTA is done on GTA Online is done. They're looking at, you know, they bring out Red Dead, a remaster or a remake, either one. And they're like, what are the legs on this? How long is this? How long is this game going to be a splash for? And they're like, well, it's not going to be GTA Online, so let's put our resources into something that's going to continue versus something that people want. So I guess that falls into some of this, too, because some of these um, remakes, reboots, whatever, (laughs) you know, they they could end up being like, well, the only the only way we're going to make a new one of these or the only way we're going to remaster these is if we can make some. Uh, money in the long run and not right. just from initial sales and at, that kind of sucks because <laughs> you know then you your options drop <laughs> for like right. okay well i'd love to see a new i don't know how about mega man Nah, we can't really you know we can't monetize, monetize that. it <laughs> <laughs> yep we, we can't make that a uh live service game well i'm sure you could 
You can find a way. <laughs> well, they you almost play this next level. Subscribe to our battle pass. <laughs> <laughs> they almost did with Mega Man. Uh, you guys remember they had that uh, Mega Man World something something. Oh right, I forgot all about that. They were gonna mm. have this was before. Uh, uh, what's his name? Kenji Inafune. Inafune. Yeah. Uh, before he had left. Like they were gonna make this whole like uh massively online Mega Man game <laughs> where you know you you could use different powers and everything like that, different costumes. Uh and I'm sure somewhere in their design docs was okay, we can do uh you know, you pay for powers. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, that that thing uh oh, got yeah. shut down uh rather quick after some initial beta testing, if I remember some of the news stories right. Probably, but I would love to see more remakes. Uh, and like I said, you know, remasters for me, eh, not so much because, es- especially now that we're getting into a lot of the games that were, I don't know, we'll say decades old, <laughs> are already kind of HD. So you might get a better resolution out of them. They might look okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you kind of like. Yo, what more can you get out of some of them? Like, is it, what's the return in, on investment on like remasters at yeah. this point? I like I said, I would like to see more remakes or even some reimaginings. As long as you know, it doesn't poo on the original stuff. Because <laughs> <laughs> my my biggest so worry I mean, about Saints, like, this this year's Saints Row is is mm-hmm. is essentially a reimagining. Yes. Although, so here's my here's my thinking on reimagining. Is it still a reimagining if it's continuing the timeline or the story, or is that more considered like a sequel or reboot? Well, it wouldn't be a uh, reboot. Th- I think those are called requels. I, I'm not joking. <laughs> I am not even joking. Oh I my god! It's a requel. <laughs> wow. Because that's that's a big thing in the movie industry is requels, and I think that's starting to seep into gaming. Which I think maybe that God of War twenty eighteen is probably more of a requel. Yeah, that sounds more like it. If that's the definition to go by, yeah. Oof. Because yeah, that that is essentially a continuation of the God of War story, but it's not the the gameplay that you're used to, right? And that's where like the reimagine. Yeah, so. We, I think requel is what might actually apply. I didn't know that Saints Row was continuing the story. I thought it was they were starting over from scratch. Now, you know, this is just me from what information I've gathered from like their Twitter account and everything, but it seems like it is a sequel to what has happened after four. So, uh, won't know until what August I think it comes out September. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, this fall, boy, Early fall. I still need to download the boss, uh, creator. <laughs> yeah, I've heard some really crazy things come out of that. I haven't done it either. See what I can whip up. Granted, usually in like games that, uh, are character creators, it's either I'm gonna try to design myself <laughs> or I'm gonna end up designing somebody I know. <laughs> it's rarely <laughs> that I ever go out like totally creative like oh i'm gonna make this cool dude or i'm yeah, gonna make this i don't do that either no yep i make either myself or the the best version of myself <laughs> <laughs> now in saints row games though i play them as a lady so i'll probably just end up making the best version of a lady <laughs> lady ed uh no that's a little weird but <laughs> <laughs> Fine, I'll make Lady Ed. I mean, hey, Edwina. more power to you. If you want to take Lady Me out, <laughs> enjoy. <laughs> I'm sh- I'm, I hear she's not fussy. <laughs> <laughs> I hear she likes um, weak old uh, milkshakes at the door. Yeah, exactly. With lots of <laughs> ants. Mm, crunchy. Of ants. Protein. See, for me, I like both the remasters and and like remakes i think they both have their place Mm -hmm. um i i guess i have played more remasters than anything else um a really good example i think 
is THQ. Um, because for, for THQ, they, they have put out remasters of Kingdoms of Amalur. Um, oh, yeah. Red Faction Guerrilla. The, uh, the first two Dark Siders games. And I hear those are very good for a remaster. They're, they're, they're excellent. Um, and I love the, the, uh, the puns that they do. So uh, Red Faction Guerrilla was Red Faction Guerrilla remarsdered because it takes place on Mars. And it's, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you've got uh, Darksiders. Uh, what was it? Yeah, I'm war. No. Yeah, like. I forgot that there was a pun on war. Uh, Darksiders 2 was Definitive Edition because I <laughs> Right, they I do remember that one. Yeah. Rem- remastered. Um, and then Kingdoms War Mastered. Of Amalur, War Mastered. I was right there. <laughs> <laughs> Kingdoms of Amalur was Re Reckoning. Yes, I do remember <laughs> that. It's like, okay, yeah. And they've been excellent. I've played actually through all of those that I've mentioned and they've been fun and they were like, I think for, for those for remasters for me, it's, it's recapturing that nostalgic feeling, but without any kind of like, since I play on PC anyway, Mm -hmm. without the hassle of like trying to make it run. Yeah. It's been so long. And that is like definitely like the positive on that is like, you know, some of these older games just won't run on newer systems or you can't find them uh, to be able to purchase or something. Or they take like an insane amount of mods to get to work or something like that. I don't yeah. necessarily have a problem going down that rabbit hole. I just would rather not. Yeah. But then THQ also, uh, well, specifically for those remastered games, you got them for free if you already own them. Even better. <laughs> so if you just already own the base games of each of those titles, you would just get the remastered version for free. Like that is the ultimate good guy meme right there. Like it is. that is that's such a great thing to do. But THQ has also experimented with remakes. And so they they remade um Destroy All Humans a couple of years ago. That was excellent. Because what? yeah. Was that that's a the one remake? I was talking about? Yeah, full on remake. It wasn't a remaster. They just remade it in Unreal Engine 4. Wow. And okay. And uh, later this year is Destroy All Humans 2, reprobed. <laughs> uh, so it's weird because they're remaking that game, but it is. So they're just saying that you're getting probed again. It's not really a play on the remastered, but they are remaking that game and they're remaking it in Unreal Engine 4. See, that's cool. You know, that take that original game and just throw it into something that's more modern. That works for yeah, me. It's beat for beat, the exact same game. You just have everything on at the highest fidelity. Yeah. I wouldn't expect anything less from the toy headquarters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I, uh, I'm either way. I guess it, it all depends, you know? Yeah, like, it really just depends. Uh, I don't know if any one thing is better than the other, but I am a big fan of game preservation. So oh, yeah. I guess like if I had to pick a side, it would be remastered because that is an aspect of preservation. Right. That's a way of keeping it uh, you know, for future. And yeah. so my thing is always is, is kind of that like the remaster is meant intended for game preservation um, and older games. But we're getting into that point right now where like the technological gap of, you know, something that's going to be remastered from like 10 years ago. Isn't as big of a gap as it was if you went from 10 years from that point to a game before that if that makes sense it's like what we've fidelity wise and visually have crossed you know you got ray tracing which is great but most of your remasters aren't adding ray tracing (laughs) you know well yeah yeah i don't think it's like we're on a gap of like uh n64 to playstation 3 right right so like that's where like a remaster in my opinion is where it's needed. So you're, you're bringing something up to a, you know, a usable spec per se. Um, but yeah, I, I typically like remakes, but then that's also because I don't play a whole lot of older games. Um, as they were, if that makes sense. Right. Yeah. Uh, you turn the soundtrack off and you don't <laughs> play old games. We get it. Yeah. 
That's you, about something. Then you do have these like weird situations too, where uh, they uh, Koei Tecmo or Namco Bandai, whatever whatever version they are, okay, released uh, the Ninja Gaiden trilogy, but they are like below the standard of a remaster <gasps> because. The Ninja Gaiden one and two code was lost. I remember so they didn't oh, actually this. remaster it. They they just like made it available to be purchased, and they did tweaks with what they had available to increase the resolution, and that's it. Like that's all they could do, and then they released it. Right, like they were They're using not even remasters. They were using a like a third version of like the PlayStation three. Uh, remastered yes. or something because they like you said they lost the code for the first two games so like the best version <laughs> what well, i don't remember where i heard it like the best version of some of those ninja gaiden uh, games actually ended up being on like the wii u or something <laughs> yes exactly that's crazy <sighs> Whew. Technology. So I don't even know what those could be called i don't think there's a name for it but like yeah there's instances like that where like Maybe a lot of the reasons why remasters don't even happen in the first place is because they just have no way of getting that code updated or no way to to re-release it in any form. Oh sure, right. Well, that's like um, what was it? it was the was it the Mass Effect DLC? One of the Mass Effect DLCs? Yeah, yeah. Or Legendary? They yeah, just that was also another lost code gone. situation. Yeah, and which is did crazy they, to think, right? <laughs> did they end up? Uh, I I don't remember. I don't think they added that to the um, uh, the collection that they just did. No, I mean no. they can't. Like they they don't have it. Out there. It's yeah, literally gone. Because they would have to end up going back in there and recoding everything. Right. They would be making a remake. <laughs> <laughs> the best DLC for that game too. Right. Or of all the games, really. But the yep. best DLC is just not playable. Which is crazy. It's just one of those crazy to me. Like, I and I get it. You know, human error. It happens. You know, no one's above it. But it's just how, right? And you <laughs> how would, do you you would think during that time game preservation was something that was you know kind of on people's minds. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. Um, it was probably in the beginning stages of like you know, hey, you know, these things are getting lost and, and not lost, but like you know, forgotten about and. Yeah, that was that the that beginning part of that, like where things are getting online um preservation and, and just an online footprint. So it's just when I heard that, I was like, wow, you know, it's it, I just I imagine someone from <laughs> from the developer being like, Hey, what's this this disk drive? I don't know. I throw it away. <laughs> <laughs> Should I check it? Nah, don't worry about nah, it. Nah, don't worry. It's old. Uh, hey, hey, wipe that. We could use it. <laughs> I don't even need, I see. I don't even imagine that. I imagine it's like it's old. How much space is on it? Oh, pff, my phone's got more space. Yeah, chuck it. Aye, aye. <laughs> well, but I, I don't think there's one that's better than the other. I think it's it's intent. No. What the intents were. Yeah, yeah, they each have a purpose. I ha- I had my preference, but I don't think there's one that is inherently the better option to go with. Oh, I agree uh, with that. Before we we kind of conclude this because it's ooh, we're going long enough we can start wrapping up. Um, mm-hmm. Scott, I did I, I listened to uh, the quick save. Oh no! Yeah, is this why I was brought here? <laughs> no, actually, uh, I we we had you come want to come on earlier, and then I was like, oh yeah, I gotta listen to that. And I'm I'm pretty sure Evan has got my 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 issue nailed. Okay, like, it it's almost. Perfect. So for people that don't know, I, uh, I'm uh, a psycho. <laughs> As some, some other Accurate. people Accurate. <laughs> and uh, I put, I turn off game uh, music on all game. Um, because I find it more bothersome than it is uh, helpful in, in my case. And after a few uh, email correspondence uh, a few times, uh, the most recent quick save, uh, Evan and Scott did a little deep dive into that and found that there is, they had mentioned, uh, Evan had mentioned uh, earlier, there are some people in the world that just don't find enjoyment from music uh, or, yep. no, I'm sorry, don't elicit 
uh, emotional, emotional responses response. yeah, yeah. from music. And, you know, taking a look at that, I was like, you know, that's actually pretty correct because I just don't listen. Like, I listen to music driving or something or cooking, but mainly doing like repetitive tasks just so it's not nothing. Um, but, you know, I don't typically end up having um, emotional responses to, musics and, uh, to music. And uh, I found that I found that funny because uh, it's such a, a weird thing for initially that I, I do. And it's just like it's everyone I told that to is like floored about, you know, I turn music off. And it just shows like to me, it wasn't weird. Especially when your sibling is like all about having <laughs> great soundtracks <laughs> in game. <laughs> So, yeah, very weird. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I uh, got to tell uh, Evan, thank you. And uh, also you, Scott. Thank you for maybe now I need to go and get that checked out. See if there's something I can implant in my brain or something to make me like music. That would be cool. Get a chip in there. Yeah. Be like a Dorito. <laughs> you you want to get the uh, the, Sega, the Sega chip in there? The um... <laughs> retro oh, chip. Sh- like a retro pie. Why am I drawing a blank on the stupid name of that? What Sega used to promote the Genesis? Uh, Sonic? <laughs> no, Pepsi it, Man. Not Pe- ooh, Pep. No, it's not Pepsi Man. Ah, <laughs> uh, shoot! It was whatever they kept promoting that the Sega uh, does what Nintendo don't. Uh, oh, the, sure. The Genesis had this uh, technology built in that made their games run faster and was better and. Uh, I'm gonna. Oh, I'm, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna remember it right after we hit. We finish recording too. And I don't. That's always how it goes. I do not feel like looking it up. So, I just uh, makes me mad. So on that note, <laughs> thank you guys for joining us today. Uh, if you haven't yet, subscribe to the .exe podcast. Did you enjoy today's discussion? This long two hour and two minute discussion so far. <laughs> That's my fault. Eh, it worked yeah, out. Yeah, it's fun. It was very fun. Uh, so if it you was. if you did enjoy, let us know. Send us your comments, questions, topics, and corrections to .exe at savingcontent.com or leave a comment to at Saving Content on Twitter and Facebook. Saving Content is also on YouTube, so subscribe for video previews, reviews, trailers, and original content like this here .exe podcast. Are you looking for more gaming discussions, though? Then check out the Saving Content Quick Save podcast with Evan and Sir Scott here. And remember, visit SavingContent.com for the latest news and reviews. This week, well, these past couple weeks, <laughs> we've had a bunch from Scott. We got uh, F122, The Elder Scrolls Online, High Isle, uh, MX vs. ATV Legends, which I hear Scott really loves. Uh, don't shark. <laughs> <laughs> He's a big proponent of that one. <laughs> if today was opposite day, sure. Right? <laughs> uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, uh, Cuphead, The Delicious Last Course, and then I had reviewed the Jackbox Party Starter. Uh, then we have some early access previews uh, with Scott on Dread Delusion. And you did um, a video... With one of your one of your uh, sons, right? With rounds, yeah, yeah. So, the game's real fun. He doesn't talk in it, but uh, he's but he's he in kicks it. my ass through two of the three <laughs> rounds that we played. Is he one of those strong, silent types? Yeah. <laughs> well, cool. He's like, he's like uh, Master Chief. There you go. You got yourself a little Master Chief. Talk only when it. needed. <laughs> <laughs> he needs to finish the fight. So before we go, we only ask one teeny tiny favor, a simple five star review. You can do it right in your podcast app. And finally, don't forget to tell your friends about us here at .exe. It'll help us grow in. We would really appreciate it. So thank you for listening. And remember, kindness costs us nothing, but it means everything. Good night. Good night.